Hello, MGTOW. Hello, man. This is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. So, I want to talk about how women control social situations. Because I believe if a man, a boy, can understand the process that's going on when he's dealing with women and leftists and globalists and socialists and social justice warrior types, that he will be better able to navigate and to avoid the traps and the dangers of the situation. Now, I don't think anybody is able to really free themselves from the destructive force of a dishonest, manipulative, victim-playing, threat narrative-based person. And the bulk of our culture is moving in that direction. And and I think you can understand why. But before I get into it, let me just say thank you to everybody who's been stopping by, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, even donating. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Howard Dare channel as it'll help me grow my channel. And I would really appreciate it. And there's a lot more content like this. So let's get into it. How women, how social justice warriors, how leftists control the social conversation and dynamic in order to exploit it and to abuse and harm honest, hardworking, freedom-loving men. Because I hope that you are starting to recognize the battle lines where the demarcation zone is. Because it's not even necessarily between men and women. Although women have access to this type of behavior, the blue pill men, the manginas, the cucks are going with the women. The people who want to live by a threat narrative and blame other people for the condition of their lives, they're going with this leftist, collectivized, cultural Marxist, social justice warrior agenda. And it's a liberal leftist agenda. The idea of tearing down the established social norms of the group that has protected and raised you, it's foolish. It's short-sighted. Naturally, we do want to correct any injustices moving forward, old views and values that are not in line with the human condition in this day and age. But we don't want to disregard the very principles that created a free nation and society, Western civilization. And yet, some people, they're so misguided in life that that's that's what they want to do they don't care they just want to tear the system down they really don't foresee any significant contributions that they can make or effects that they can have on the situation and so they want to destroy it and this brings us to what we're talking about here how the women how the uh, dependent how the uh, liar how the cheat controls the situation And it's essentially by playing the victim. It's essentially by coming into a fair, open system, like an open market, or like MGTOW, or like a debate or a conversation where people are searching for the truth. So someone comes into that type of a setting and operates under the premise that they are searching for the truth, but they're not. They're trying to undermine and destroy the truth. This is our immigration problem, okay? The people are not coming here to be part of the country and to work and to pay taxes and to follow the laws. They're coming here to get onto welfare, to use the free government services and to break the laws. This really is like somebody saying, I need sanctuary in the church, coming into the church and then kicking everybody else out of the church. And the way that you do this with free, honest, productive people is you play the victim. You pretend that you are also a free, honest, hardworking, productive person and that somehow your rights have been denied or oppressed. This is the trigger. This is the button that you can press to get men and honest people of Western civilization to listen to you and to go along with you. It doesn't work on the other people. Right. You know, I laugh, but isn't it so tragic? Like you can't go to a Muslim nation and say to them, hey, will you take in all these refugees? They won't even take in people from their neighboring countries. And yet liberals, social justice warriors, collectivists within a free market system say that we are compelled to do such a thing. Uh, You know, there's really only two ways that 
the socialist and the collectivist can control the free market, the free productive person. And that is through um, guilt, like in the moment, like you have to do this or the people are suffering, right? Remember, it only works on someone who feels compassion for the people who are suffering. Um, <laughs> so ironic. And the other way to do it is, you know, to to frighten them mystically, you know, is to tell them that uh, their ancestors and that, you know, the traditions expect them to make these types of sacrifices and to do these types of things. And the problem is, of course, is that until a person, a man, a MGTOW, is extremely well established in his ethical base, he's going to fall for both of those. And... I mean, you know, he's not ready necessarily to go his own way. So when they say, hey, you're going against the group and the group is going to be mad at you, the man says, well, I better not do that. <laughs> and then the immigrants get to come in and destroy your local population. So it's done by playing the victim, by pretending that some injustice has been done to them when they are, in fact, the ones who perform the injustice and are the ones who are, in fact, gaming and manipulating the system through this emotional abuse, which only works on the men who actually have this level of character. It's like making a hundred bets with someone who never pays when they lose on a bet but expects you to pay on the one time that you actually do lose on a bet. You know, and this is a very, very difficult thing to teach a man or a person that you have an obligation to yourself to not interact with the dishonest people. In other words, if you don't work, you don't eat. That's all. And if you don't take care of the problems in your life, then you are destined to be overcome by those problems in your life. And it's, it's nobody else's responsibility. And yet, I would say 80% of the world's population has actually got this idea running through their head that somebody has done them wrong and therefore they are owed something from someone else. I hope you can see why thinking that way would, <laughs> would kind of get in the way of somebody actually getting anything done. So recognize that it's playing the victim. It's asking for sympathy. It's pretending that some great injustice has been done when people's place in life is based on personal responsibility. It's, it's not based on any of these other narratives, these threat narratives. So I hope you're starting to see why certain people are always finding fault with other people. It's like, let me tell you what's wrong with this person. <laughs> it's like, no, why don't you just go do a decent job yourself in life? And it's like, no, 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 I can't. They won't let me. Like, well, you won't. You're not doing good work. So it's this challenge of being productive in a free market system, very challenging. Or you can play the victim. And uh, if you can play the victim effectively enough, the productive people will stop what they're doing and they'll, they'll give you some help. They'll give you something to make you shut up. So I think if you can recognize what this is and what's going on here, that you can avoid these traps. In other words, let's say you're a mid-level manager at a company. The least productive people, the people who know the least, are going to come to you and they're going to complain the most. The people who can do the least are going to complain the most. And they're going to blame other people. And if they can get you to believe that the reason why they can't be productive is because of somebody else, they get to keep their job for a little while longer. It's a hell of a way to go through life. I mean, it's not effective, especially for a man, right? Because it's, it's emotional, it's reactive. I can't tell you what a displeasure it is to deal with a dishonorable man, like a man who will tell lies about you. A man who will attack your reputation when he has no reputation. Or a woman. You know what I, you know, like the feminist goes into the courtroom and tells lies about, you know, the man. The women come on to the news programs and play the victim, you know, for every encounter that they had with any man. So there's no actual dealing with one of those people. They're going to come, they're going to tell their lies, they're going to do their damage. All of these things are like protected speech under the idea of somebody pretending to be offended. I mean, microaggressions. You can use the wrong language and offend somebody. So you understand that they're just setting up more and more of these things where they get offended so that they can use that to lord over people. Now, the, the really interesting thing about it is, is why are these people so easily offended? Why are the special snowflakes? I mean, I mean, you have to realize that they, they really feel that way. They're not faking it. So it wasn't always like this. People were not always so stuck in their own feelings. They, they would just get on with it. They would just go and do a job. 
you know, they would get their feelings hurt. They would say, you know, I don't appreciate that. I don't like you. I don't want to work with you. And then they would move on. They would not create false allegations and create these types of social situations. So it's this very immature emotional reaction to the world around them. You could definitely suggest that it's, you know, medication, but it's also a sort of, you know, expectation in life of being taken care of. Gluttony. You could see this in the uh, physical stature that the people have adopted lately. They're not taking care of themselves. They indulge themselves. They indulge their whims and their feelings. You could also explain it as a kind of reaction to being indoctrinated and propagandized. In other words, if your greatest value in life is your position within the group, not the work that you do, and the way that you move your position is through pretending to be offended and moving up in a victim hierarchy, and this allows the individual to indulge their feelings and their emotions, which is essentially, you know, like turning off their brain and not taking responsibility. You can understand why they would use those tactics. Those are the tactics that have been used on them to get them to conform to a system that devalues them, that, you know, places no value on them. And so when they go to interact with others, they have no shame or qualms about using those exact same tactics. You'd think it might be the other way around, but no, this is why, you know, this uh, pattern of abuse seems to continue. The cycle of abuse continues. So that's basically it. This is how the, the weak person controls the conversation by pretending that some great injustice has been done to them and that they are oppressed. And usually the only injustice that, you know, that's been heaped upon them is that they are responsible for their own lives. And understand that nobody owes you anything. No other man, no other person owes you anything in life. They just don't. And to expect it is to be a child. And to feel obligated that you owe something to someone else is to be a fool. Is to not have an accurate grounding in what it means to be a free person. So hopefully by understanding this dynamic and some of the variables involved, you can navigate the situation, not fall into the traps, not become too frustrated, and move on and still have a productive life. That's the plan. Okay, so let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. And please like, share, comment, subscribe, donate, and join me again, Howard Dare, as I plan to have more content for you. Thank you, MGTOW.